Hello and welcome to Learning Across Kansas. I am Tabitha Rossbroy and I'll be your host for today's show. Learning Across Kansas is a partnership between the Kansas State Department of Education and the Public Broadcasting Service. We hope to bring learning into your homes in a new way while we deal with the physical distancing and health issues facing our state and our country. Today on our show, we are going to be learning about geometry. When I was a little girl, I thought geometry was something just for big kids. But as I grew, I learned that geometry is something many of us use in our everyday lives. Today, we are going to hear from some outstanding educators. We are going to learn about science, math, literacy, engineering, architecture, PE, and much more. We have got lots of treats in store for you. First, we're going to start out with Mrs. Schneider and Mrs. Lovenstein, who are both going to be showing us how geometry can be learned through poetry and literacy. Let's go check it out. Well, hello there, shape experts. My name is Mrs. Schneider, and today I have a poem to share with you about solid shapes or 3D shapes. We can find shapes all around us and they look like everyday things. So let's find out about our poem and how it compares 3D shapes to everyday objects. Solid shapes. Solid shapes are fat, not flat. A cone is like a party hat. A sphere is like a bouncy ball. A prism's like a building tall. A cylinder is like a can you pop. A cube is like a dice you drop. Solid shapes are here and there. Solid shapes are everywhere. So this poem has a lot of rhyming words and I want it to be some more detectives and find all of those rhyming words. We know that words rhyme when they have the same ending sound, like shape, sh, ape. Ape is the ending sound, so a rhyming word would be cape because they have that same ending sound, the ape sound. So let's look at our lines of our poem and find the rhyming words. Solid shapes are fat, not flat. A cone is like a party hat. What words rhyme in those two lines? You got it. Fat, flat, and hat all rhyme because they have that ending at sound. Let's try another a sphere is like a bouncy ball. A prism is like a building tall. Do those sentences have any rhyming words? You got it. Ball and tall. They have the all sound at the end, so they rhyme. Let's try a few more. A cylinder is like a can you pop. A cube is like a dice you drop. Are there any rhyming words in there? You bet. Pop and drop. Last two, let's read through those. A solid shapes are here and there. Solid shapes are everywhere. Do we have any rhyming words in those two lines? You got it. Here, there, everywhere. Those all rhyme. You guys are rhyming all stars. Now, are you ready to challenge your brain? Great. Go find some solid shapes in your home and then see if you can come up with some rhyming words to describe them. Good luck and have fun. Thanks for learning with me today. Hi, boys and girls. Did you know that April is National Poetry Month? Well, I decided to write a few poems of my own on the geometric shapes that we are learning about this week. And just for fun, I created some shape characters to go along with my poems. Hope you enjoy! There once was a shape called a square who had some curls for her hair. Four right angles, as you can see, along with her four vertices. Two pairs of parallel lines are there. Four equal sides are on this square. One day a trapezoid was walking down the street, greeting everyone that he would meet. My two obtuse angles are at the top of my head, but my two acute angles are on the bottom 
he said. Have you ever seen a shape walk by? Two parallel lines has this old guy. Its four sides are all the same. Two obtuse angles make up his frame. Two acute angles, one low, one high. A rhombus is the name of this guy. A rectangle stood alongside a road, its four right angles carrying the load. Look closely at the parallel lines that you can see. There are two pairs, as we all agree. My last poem is called a haiku, and a haiku is a Japanese poem that only has 17 syllables, so it's really short. Well, they're usually about nature, so I decided to use our last shape, a circle, inside of a nature picture. Circle in the sky, it has no sides or corners shining on the earth. Poetry is like art, except with words. Maybe you've been inspired to write some poetry, read poetry, or to create some shape characters. But before you go do that, I want to read one last poem for you. And this is the poem that I wrote just for you. You are each amazing, just like you are, with talents and abilities that stretch so far. Now go create and do your best. No matter what, we will be impressed. See you next week. Wow, Mrs. Schneider, I love that activity that you did. I saw lots of things that you used that I could find around my house and see what shapes I have. And did you see those silly costumes on Mrs. Lovenstein's shapes? <laughs> those made me laugh a lot. And also, it reminded me that April is National Poetry Month. I think before I go to bed tonight, I'll read some of my favorite poems. And when I wake up tomorrow, I might even try to write my own. Hey parents, you're doing great! With Kansas school buildings closed and homes being turned into classrooms, parents and caregivers have expanded their roles in their students' learning. This is a new experience for most of us, so let's show one another a little grace. When you and your students start to feel overwhelmed or stressed, take a break. It's really okay. Keeping students interested and engaged in learning is the key to success. Remember, you have an entire community of fellow caregivers and teachers to lean on. Reach out. Together, Kansans can. In our next segment, we will be hearing from Mrs. Nobach, music teacher, who is going to teach us a new line dance. Lines are very important in dancing and all kinds of dance routines. Then we are going to hear from Mrs. Clark, who is going to talk to us about how artists use shapes to make new forms and teach us how to make something that is a lot like stained glass. Let's go see what they have in store. Well, hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Nobach again, your music teacher, and in today's lesson we're going to talk about music and geometry, and I thought it'd be really fun if we learned a very simple line dance all in the comfort of your own home. Before we do those steps, a couple things to remember, your back needs to be straight while you're dancing, keep the steady beat in your feet, and the last thing, and it's pretty important, make sure that whatever song we dance to, you have to be able to count to four in very easily. So, those steps are really easy. I'm going to turn around so you can watch. Forward, two, three, four, and back. Two, three, four, and right, and two, and left, and turn. That's it. We're going to do that four times in the song Rock and Robin. That's what I've chosen for today. So try it with me. Well, that's it for the 
and go, it's pretty simple, huh? You can pick whatever song you want to, as long as you can comfortably count to four in it. Keep your back up straight. And also remember steady beats in your feet. Until next time, this is Mrs. Nobach. Have a wonderful day, boys and girls. Bye. Hello, artists. Today, we're gonna to talk about the art element, shape. How artists use it in their work and how you can explore shape at home. When a line ends where it began, it catches a space inside that we call a shape. Some shapes follow rules, like the circle that's perfectly round, the square that has four sides the same, or the triangle with three corners. Those are called geometric shapes. Other shapes don't follow rules. They might remind us of things from real life, like a paint splat or a leaf shape. Those are called organic shapes. Artists use both in their work. Let's take a look at how artists use shape. This is a stained glass lamp from the Metropolitan Museum in New York City. Do you see organic shapes in the daffodil flowers? Maybe you've seen a stained glass window before that's a piece of artwork that uses glass shapes to make beautiful designs. If you want to explore shape at home, grab some paper and crayons or some an aluminum foil and permanent markers. Be sure to ask adult permission first and consider covering your workspace with something like newspaper to protect the table underneath. Now I'm going to put four dots in the corners of my foil and start a line that's gonna loop around, cross itself, and go back to the other dots on the page. Every time my loop crosses over a line, it creates more shapes. Use your colored markers to find shapes inside your design. Try the same project with straight lines to create shapes like rectangles, squares, parallelograms, and triangles. And finally, we have this shape artwork. It's crayon on paper, sent to us by Max, a fourth grader in Shawnee, Kansas. Great job, Max, and happy creating artists. Oh, hey, you caught me doing one of my very favorite things, which is dancing. I was so excited to learn that new line dance from Mrs. Nobach. And I got to see even more how knowing about lines is important in all the dance routines I like to do. And also, thank you, Mrs. Clark, for showing us how artists use shapes to make different forms. I never knew how important geometry was in creating art. But now that I think about it, some of my best artist friends are really good at geometry too. I can't wait for you to see what we have next. Next up in the world of geometry, Mrs. Rogers is going to teach us about partitioning shapes into two and four equal parts. Then Mrs. Henwood is going to use toothpicks and marshmallows to teach us about 3D solid shapes. I can't wait to see it. Hey there friends, it's Mrs. Rogers here. I just sat down, it's lunchtime for me. I made a beautiful peanut butter jelly sandwich. My favorite. Oh, I can't wait to dive in. It's gonna be so tasty. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. Where are my manners? Would you like some? Well, I don't think I have any more sandwiches. I wish there was a way that I could share this with you. Wait, what was that? Cut it so that we each have the same size piece. Genius, why didn't I think of that? Well, I'm not really sure how to cut it. Can you help me with that? Can you help me figure out a way that I can cut it so that we each have the same size piece? Yeah, let's do it. Should I cut it like this? No, 
You're right. The two pieces aren't the same. That wouldn't be fair. Let's try it another way. Should I cut it like this? Yeah, that's better. Now I have two pieces that are the same size. We call two pieces that are the same equal. Now you have half of the sandwich and I have half of the sandwich. Is that the only way we can cut the sandwich in half? Well, what about if we cut the sandwich this way? We call that diagonally. Do we get two equal pieces? Yeah, we sure do. There's a piece for you and a piece for me. Well, I think I'm going to cut it like this. We call that vertically. Ah, much better. A half of a yummy sandwich for you and a half of a yummy sandwich for me. Now, if we cut our sandwich one more time, what do you think would happen? Well, I would have two pieces and you would have two pieces. Let's count them. One, two, three, four. We've cut our sandwich into four equal parts. Each piece is one fourth of a whole sandwich. Great work, mathematicians. Way to use your problem solving brain. What can you divide into halves and fourths? You know, there are math problems everywhere you look, even your lunch. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello, friends. My name is Mrs. Henwood, and today I've been working on a project making some shapes. Now, these are not just any shapes. They are three-dimensional shapes. Now, maybe you can help me out. What are some examples of three-dimensional shapes? Hmm. Oh, that's right. Shapes like a cube, a sphere, cylinder, cone, or a pyramid. These are all three-dimensional shapes. Three-dimensional shapes are solid objects that have three different dimensions, a length, a width, and a height. Well, what does that actually mean? Let's look at some objects and compare them. Do you notice the difference? Well, a shape that I cut out of paper is a two-dimensional shape while a basketball is a three-dimensional shape. Today, I've used some toothpicks and mini marshmallows to create three-dimensional shapes. Now, the toothpicks represent a very important characteristic of 3D shapes. You'll have to use your imagination a little bit, but the toothpicks are where two flat faces or sides of a shape come together. We call these edges on three-dimensional shapes. I've used the marshmallows to connect my edges and faces of my shape together. The marshmallows represent another important characteristic of 3D shapes. The marshmallows would be considered the pointy corners of a three-dimensional shape where edges meet. We call the hard pointy corners of a shape the vertex or vertices if there are more than one. Now, this project is pretty simple and something you can create at home. If you don't have toothpicks and marshmallows, try using other objects like straws and twist ties or uncooked spaghetti and a little bit of tape. That's the beauty of your creativity. You can make three-dimensional shapes out of anything and explore their important characteristics, faces, edges, and vertices. Thanks for joining me today for some fun with three-dimensional shapes. I hope you have a wonderful day of learning. See you soon. Wow, Mrs. Rogers really made me think about ways that I can share with my friends and family while still practicing geometry. I think that I'll try that at my next meal. Then Mrs. Henwood reminded me how important it is to use geometry in construction projects, like building houses and schools. Our vertices and our edges have to be just right. I'll see you right after this message. Kansas school buildings may be closed for the remainder of the academic year, but school is still in session. Keeping students engaged in the learning process during this extraordinary time is critical for their ongoing success. We salute our teachers, parents, and guardians who are committed to ensuring their students finish this year strong. We're all ready for our lives to get back to normal, but until that time, 
Kansas students, keep learning and keep working towards your goals. Together, Kansans can. Welcome back. I am really excited about our next two segments because they involve two of my favorite areas, PE and STEM. First, Mrs. Wynn is going to teach us about testing the strength of geometric shapes. And then Mrs. Baugh, with the help of her son, is going to use shapes to help us get in shape. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to Mrs. Wynn's STEM Lab. I'm Mrs. Wynn, and I'm coming to you from Waukini, Kansas. Today, I have a question. My question is, what geometrical shape is the strongest? Hmm. I think we're going to have to make geometrical shapes. Let's start with a regular piece of paper, an eight and a half by 11, just like any piece of paper. This is not special paper. It's not any thicker than any regular paper. It's just colored. So let's make our first shape. Today, we are learning about shapes and how many sides they have. We're also going to use those shapes to tell us how many exercises we're going to do. I have a special guest with me today. My son Aiden is here. Aiden is a sophomore in high school. We're going to switch places, so we'll be right back. All right, so we have a sign with us today that gives some different exercise choices. They're numbered one, two, three, and four. We also have a bowl that has four different shapes in it. So Aiden's going to do the drawing for us of the shape and then you decide which exercise you want to do and Aiden's going to decide which one he wants to do. All right, Aiden, let's draw first. The first one, you're choosing between push-ups or squats. Aiden, what kind of shape did you draw? A pentagon. A pentagon. Hmm. How many sides are in a pentagon? Five. Five. Aiden, five push-ups or five squats? Good job, Aiden. Aiden's going to draw again. This time it's jumping jacks or ski jumps, and he got a square. square. A square has how many sides? Four. Four. So make your choice, Aiden. 
Good job. This time, your choices are high knees or burpees. Aiden, draw the shape. What'd you get, Aiden? An octagon. An octagon has how many sides? Hmm. Eight. Eight sides. So Aiden's going to choose eight high knees or eight burpees. Good job, Aiden. Last one. Aiden's going to draw front kicks or arm circles. A triangle. A triangle has how many sides? Three. Three. So Aiden's going to make his choice. Did you make yours? Good job, Aiden. We're going to switch places again, so we'll be right back. All right, boys and girls, so I hope you had a great time using shapes to determine how many exercises you do. See you next time. Bye. I can't believe all the things we learned together today. We learned that geometry has a role in the fine arts, in math, in science, in movement, and in engineering. I also know that geometry plays a big role in things like astronomy. We use geometry to help us understand the location and position of the stars, the solar systems, and planets. We also use geometry when we cook, when we use maps and computers, and when we create video games. Pretty cool, huh? We are so glad that you learners got to join in with us today and think about all the ways to use geometry. On behalf of Kansas educators, we love you, we miss you, and we hope you had a lot of fun today. I'm Tabitha Rossbroy, and I'll see you next time.